Welcome to Miami Marlins Hot Stove with Kyle Seeloff and Steven Strong. Come on! Is it enough? And the waltz is gone! Looking up, does it have enough? Yes! There she goes! And the pitch is swung out and missed strike three! There it is! They've done it! The drought is over! The Marlins beat the Pirates 7-3! They are postseason bound in 2023! In or out of season, Marlins baseball is always on Fox Sports 940. Well, Happy New Year! Welcome back. Thanks for joining us on this glorious Tuesday night from our Fox Sports 940 Marlins Radio Network studios up here in Pembroke Pines, as well as the iHeartRadio app, wherever you might be, wherever you might be listening tonight. This is the Miami Marlins Hot Stove Show with Stephen Strom and our producer this evening, Ricardo Wanche. I'm Kyle Seeloff. It is good to be back. I hope everybody had a terrific holiday season. Your Christmas was terrific. Your New Year's was terrific. Everybody stayed safe and healthy. And, oh, baby, Stephen, it's good to see you first and foremost. And I would additionally say we are on the precipice of Mm. once again being able to say baseball is back as well. 48 days until the uh, spring training opener versus the Cardinals. I'm not counting, though. Happy 2024. I don't know how long we have until we have to stop saying Happy New Year, but it's great to see you. Uh, only got a couple more shows left, like you said, uh, which means baseball is almost here. We got a lot to get into. We got a very special guest today, so I'm very excited for the program tonight. And that special guest was only with the Marlins for two months in a couple of games in the playoffs last season. Uh, but it is Josh Bell who had a big decision to make this mm. offseason, whether he would test the free agency market, would he opt in to a, 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 a real terrific chunk of change and um, exercise his player option, which he chose to do. Josh Bell is back with the Miami Marlins in 2024. We will be chatting with Josh Bell coming up in just a couple of minutes in segment two of the program here tonight. Steven mentioned that the Hot Stove Show will be wrapping up soon. It's actually going to wrap up on January 26th, and that's because that is FanFest, and I hope everybody can make it out to Lone Depot Park. It's FanFest. It's presented by ADT 4 to 10, January 26th. I know we'll be doing a live show from the ballpark from 3 to 5, but I would encourage everybody to come out to Lone Depot Park. Again, it's the 26th of January, 4 to 10 at night. I know it'll be your first one, Steven, but it's a great, great night autographs favorite players they're relaxed they're loose they're comfortable go buy tickets hit homers do whatever you got to do but that really is the start of the baseball season and it's one of my favorite events of the year yeah everyone talks about it very highly so i'm very excited for it. it's two days after my birthday so i'll be even more juiced up for it um and we've got some great players on our team as far as being able to interview they're very good with us and they always give us great time so uh, i'm excited and again man it's uh It's crazy. It feels like the baseball season just ended, but there's a lot of excitement. They're starting to get some juice going. I'm excited to get back in front of everybody and um, and get this thing going. So FanFest should be an awesome time. And don't forget about it. Again, it's presented by ADT, Lone Depot Park, Friday, January 26th. It's going to be from 4 to 10 at night, meet and greets, interactive games, fireworks, and a whole lot more. Get your free ticket at marlins.com slash FanFest. Very, very easy. It's a free event. You tell me, do you want to start with today's news? Do you want to start with New Year's resolutions for the Miami Marlins? Uh, Start with today's news, and then we'll make our way to the New Year's resolutions because I think that takes priority right now before our 2024, I guess, resolution or prediction, whatever you want to call it. So under the direction of Peter Bendix, he continues to make changes to the baseball operations side of the front office and making new hires in the Marlins uh, according to sources, have made one today, and I think Christina De Nicola, along with Craig Mish, broke the news. But the Miami Marlins are hiring Rachel Balkovich, and I believe I'm saying that correctly. Rachel, excuse me, I did some research on Google. I tried to make sure I have the pronunciation correct. Uh, but Rachel Balkovich has become the new director of player development for the Miami Marlins. Again, that's according to sources that there has been no official statement, but. I would imagine this is headed in the right direction, but <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to take ownership of, ownership of it. Um, so let me just say this about Rachel. Um, and people might know her name. Most recently, she was with the New York Yankees affiliate in Tampa, the Tampa Tarpons, serving as the manager Skipper. of that team yep. from 2022 through 2023. She did a great job. Prior to that, she was a catcher for Creighton University back in the day. She got 
um, a higher level of education with Creighton, then al- along with LSU and kind of kinesiology, the strength and conditioning. It's how she started her career back in 2012 with the St. Louis Cardinals. That turned into a full-time job. Uh, went on to work with the Houston Astros as their Latin American strength and conditioning coordinator, one of my favorite talking points. She learned Spanish to be able to communicate with the players better. She was with the Astros, took a bit of a hiatus, went to the Netherlands, uh, pursued a second master's degree, 2019 rolls around. She wow. ends up back in the New York Yankees organization. Um, she was a hitting coach for them. Um, and then, long story short, one thing led to another. She ended up serving as the manager of the Tampa Tarpons and the New York Yankees system in the last couple of years. I'm very hopeful that in the coming days, maybe we have an opportunity to chat with her because she's now yes. going from the top step of the dugout back to the front office. I would imagine this is a move that she wouldn't make if she wasn't passionate about it. So congratulations to Rachel. And if the news is true, uh, I know we certainly look forward to chatting with her soon. Congratulations, Rachel. And I will tell you this, Kyle, this is a get on brand for Peter Bendix, right? This is another person that he's going to bring in that doesn't just do one thing well multiple things versatile comfortable in different situations it, it's almost like um you want to bring in baseball players for your team not just if we're not just bringing in a first baseman we're not just bringing in a shortstop we're bringing in baseball players athletes that can play different positions it's no different with the front office we're seeing the plethora of talent that comes in for the front office and they've just been experienced in different situations and different um, positions and it's a beautiful thing you start to mix around these people and all of a sudden um, you know y- you hope to get successful results with the amount of experience that these people have you know the one thing I'll say and I actually hope we have an opportunity um, uh, again maybe soon there's been multiple new hires and a lot of folks yeah there's a lot of folks I think we'd like to chat with one of them for me would be Gabe Kapler and I mentioned his name to me this hire today might have a little bit of his fingerprints on it because remember Alyssa Nakin if that name rings a bell she had an opportunity to coach first base for a game for the San Francisco yep. Giants a couple of years ago um, Gabe Kapler was very kind of revolutionary and forward progressive thinking in that regard I would imagine maybe he's got his hands on this as well so obviously he had hired the first female to be coaching inside of the dugout at the big league level. So long story short, that's today's news, and hopefully we have an opportunity to chat with Rachel, Gabe, and others in the coming days. Let's transition now. It is the new year, Mm. and the new year brings resolutions. And Stephen had this terrific idea that what we're going to do is we're each going to present one New Year's resolution for the Miami Marlins in 2024. And Stephen, I would say the floor is yours. This one was tough because you can go in a million different directions with your resolution. You can say, I want this person to play this position or bat in this order or this team to do this. I stuck with what I really believe is going to catapult the Marlins um, to a next level in 2024, and I think it's simple. Be more opportunistic with runners in scoring position. Let's just look at how they did in 2023. League-wise, 24th in RBIs, 460, 22nd in home runs with 39, 18th in hits, 16th in batting average. As a team, Miami had 166 home runs. It was actually the most in a full season since 2017, but Jorge Soler was responsible for 36 of them. That's over 21%. So we'll start with being more opportunistic with runners in scoring position. Now the good news here, Kyle is that your top four batters, as far as batting average with runners in scoring position, are back. Luis Arise, he had 434 with runners in scoring position. Uh, Jake Berger, Josh Bell, and Brian De La Cruz. The other good, and we loved in, we loved them and we thank, appreciate them for their services with Joey Wendell and Jacob Stallings, but Joey Wendell hit 178 with runners in scoring position and Jacob Stallings 175. So, Again, it's almost addition by subtraction. You bring in Christian Bethencourt. You hope Nick Fortes has a better year. So I think that's where I'll start here because I felt at times when the Marlins struggled, it wasn't really it went through a stretch where it was the pitching. But I thought at times the offense got stagnant and you kind of it felt very difficult to score a couple of runs per game, particularly in that uh, out of the All Star break. I think being more opportunistic with runners in scoring position is going to be the New Year's resolution for Miami. And I think that'll be a resolution for many teams as well, but it's a terrific one. It's obviously obviously, uh, an area in which if you don't capitalize upon it, it can become a conversation and a sticking point and a talking note point on a nightly basis if you're losing close games. That's something the Marlins did not do at all last year. They they, they, they were just incredible in in all of the one-run games. So being more opportunistic with runners in scoring position, I, I I think it's great. I think the Marlins are going to need a little bit more power, and we'll see if they're able to find that. Go ahead. Let's hear it. 
So I, I took a different approach, not offensively. I'm going to go to the pitcher's mound. The Marlins starting pitching staff, for all intents and purposes, was very, very good last year. But they ran out of starting pitching. Mm. And not only did they run out of it, they did not log enough innings. The Miami Marlins logged 818 innings from their starting pitching staff last season, which ranked 20th in baseball. So that's the bottom third. Well, I guess one shy of the bottom third if 21 through 30 is going to be the bottom third. Sure. My New Year's resolution for the Miami Marlins, and I understand why I say this, that this is going to present some challenges and difficulties, is to find a way to log more innings and get more innings from the starting staff so you don't start blowing through a bullpen. It's very difficult, but when you rank in the bottom half of the league in innings from starting pitching, at some point that's going to tax a bullpen. Mm -hmm. Which it did. I say all of that, and I'm also very cognizant that upcoming this Friday is the MLB arbitration deadline. And you might be like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. I understand that portion may not, but I say that, and here's why. 11 Miami Marlins are arbitration eligible. One of them is Jesus Lazardo. That's a guy that continues to have his name thrown out there. So while I sit here and say my resolution would be for the Miami Marlins starting pitching staff to log more innings than they did last year, this is all contingent upon what that rotation looks like. Absolutely. With all of these arbitration eligible, 11 guys that are arbitration eligible, that's a lot. What's going to happen to a Jesus Lazardo, right? It, it, that's about $6 million. People think he's going to be owed in arbitration. You know, I, I, I thought about that. I just think in some way, shape, or form, thank goodness this isn't my job or your job, but they've got to find a way to get more innings from the starting pitching staff. Yes. So let's talk about that real quick because there, there needs to be context provided to it. I agree with you. Of course, they need to go deeper into games. I think Skip almost looked at it as quality over quantity given the certain context and situation. Two, three, let's just let's talk about Braxton Garrett, Hayes, just those two right there. Those guys were on career limits on everything, right? They're 25 years old. So I think you'll see that next step with them. So I do think that th- those two will have a boost. And then Yuri Perez, who came up uh, in May, and you had to sort of – baby him is – I don't. It's too negative of a connotation, but I think they really no, had to accurate. watch. And he's going to get babied again this yeah. year. Yeah. Okay. So then that was ninety-one in the third innings. Yeah. So what? He's going to give you what? One hundred thirty? Sure. That's another six, seven, eight starts. The other right. inning eater was supposed to be Johnny Cueto, which went very poorly this season. Um, so when you look at it as a total, I I I, comp- I agree with you. This team, they're starting pitching at least. They need to have more innings. They've got to put together uh, better, I think, quality starts again. This is just tough because Braxton Garrett would go four and two-thirds, three hits, one run, and put his team in a position to win, which is what you want. You'd rather have a guy do that, I think, than go seven innings, gave up five runs, eight hits. Does that make sense? Yes. You're absolutely correct. But when you take a look at the full scope of 162 games. You've got to put up more innings. Absolutely. And and I would say this. Just take a look at the current five starting pitchers right now. Jesus Lazardo, if he's here, no concerns. I'm not willing to put him in the mix right now. I think there's a very real possibility that he gets traded. This This is a guy, multiple years of arbitration now, a little over three years of service time, going to be owed about $6 million this year. A team like the Yankees or Twins uh, are salivating. You you know, and and I – I, I, I'm just not sure. For for Lazardo, this is I'm sorry, this is his first year of arbitration. Next year will be Arb two. His his tradeability and that value might be as high as it ever is. Okay. Yep. I digress. Let's go back to the depth chart. I'm just not going to include Lazardo. I just don't know if he's going to be here. Yuri Perez, he is a staple. He might be the ace. If and how many innings do you think he goes this year? Maybe 130. 130? 130. Okay. So that was 99 to third last year. I maybe 130, 140. Okay. That's a substantial jump, but that's not a full season. Sure. Braxton Garrett, no concerns. He just has to stay healthy. Edward Cabrera went almost 100 last year. If he gives you a full season, what's that? 150, 150? 160? You might let him go a little bit. Trevor Rogers? Has to, I, I, I have no You're idea. Still, jury's still out for him. To say the least. I don't know if they've entered the courtroom. Okay. Because I don't know if he can stay healthy. Okay. Yeah, but, you know, I, I just wanted to get into this a little bit. We'll take a break in a second, but I think it's fascinating to look at because – you, you and Skip talked about this, dude. You blow through a bullpen, it, right? <laughs> Real Winning quick. games in the big leagues is really hard. Yep, yep. And when you're forced to kind of make moves after four or five innings and rely on a bullpen for four or five innings it's every stressful. night, it's taxing. And we saw that 
ultimately reach a boiling point down the finish line in 2023. So I say all this to say the Marlins have got to find more innings from the starting pitching this season. But if you trade a Jesus Lazardo, who I would have no problem doing, in fact, I might believe right now it's the correct thing to do. You could probably get maybe two, three big leaguers back and return two big leaguers and a prospect. I'd be very curious to see how Peter Bendix and That's company, how Tampa's done it, Kyle. Correct. And I'm just very curious to see if that's how they assemble this thing or how they're going to assemble it to get all that depth. Because even if you look at AAA, you you, you talk about guys like, you know, Max Meyer, and maybe he contributes for 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 innings. He's probably not going to start this season at the big leagues. You just don't know. Ryan Weathers, you know, I loved what I saw the last last day in Pittsburgh. Brian Hoeing, you you just don't know. Yep. Outside of a Braxton Garrett, Outside of Braxton Garrett, <laughs> a lot if Jesus Lazardo is not rotation. here and he Absolutely. gets traded, and maybe you get veterans back for him, but if you remove Lazardo, the only guy that you can comfortably say can give you a full season without any question marks would be Braxton Garrett. Yep. He's the only one that's proven it so far. There's a lot more I'd like to get into on that. I know I have to take a break, but it's unprecedented. Not unprecedented, but the Marlins do have 11 arbitration-eligible players. The deadline to exchange figures is Friday. Then, obviously, things go to the court if they can't settle. But projected right now, 11 arbitration-eligible players is about $35 million for the Marlins yep. this year. And the guy that's going to command the most, is a rise. I promise I'm going to go to a break, is Luisa Rise, about $10.8 million. Yep. Do you trade that? You trade Luisa Rise? I don't, but... I could see the. There's a massive appeal there. Yeah. There's a the massive appeal. appeal. Yep. And I love talking about it. And we're going to keep doing it when we come back. But I will say when we come back and before we continue that arbitration chat in a couple of minutes, we're going to chat with Josh Bell when we come back on the other side of the break. You're listening to the Miami Marlins Hot Soap Show on your home for Marlins baseball. Fox Sports 940 in the iHeartRadio app. 940 in the iHeartRadio app. 